Happy Sunday, everyone, and you have reached the hundredth episode. That's right, hundredth episode. Too long didn't scroll. For a hundred days straight, TLDS has been providing watchers and listeners with the best way to get their daily news fix, with quick and listenable summaries of important news events served up every day to get you started on your morning. The hundredth episode you are about to watch today will describe important news events for April the twenty ninth, twenty twenty three. Happy listening, everyone. And thanks to those of you who actually watch the things I make. Sudan's army has accused its rival paramilitary rapid support forces of opening fire on a Turkish evacuation plane as it landed at Wadi Zedna airport outside Khartoum. Sudan's armed forces releasing the pictures that they say show the plane. These have not been verified by us. We start off the events of day 100 in the country of Sudan. Since April the 13th, Sudan has been the center of a massive nationwide conflict between the forces of the Sudanese military junta and the paramilitary group, the Rapid Support Forces, or RSF. The RSF was created back in 2013 out of a union of numerous Janjaweed militias by the then iteration of the Sudanese government to help assist it in the war in Darfur. The RSF proceeded to become embroiled in controversy after participation in atrocities like the Darfur Genocide and Khartoum Massacre. The RSF proceeded to exist as an assisting party to the Sudanese military in duties like border patrol and local defense. That they would later turn on the Sudanese government along with the military in 2019 during a political crisis that ousted the then president Omar al Bashir. Sudan would later come under the rule of a full on military junta in 2021 after the RSF and military initiated another coup. However, ties between the military and RSF have faltered over time as tensions sprung between the two over attempts by the junta to combine the RSF with the military and RSF leader Mohamed Hamdan de Gallo expressed regret at the RSF's involvement in the coup and began supporting a resumption of Sudan's transition back to democracy. After a full mobilization on the 13th, tensions culminated in a full-blown clash nationwide on the 15th as the two sides began vying for control. This is your daily update for the current situation. Out. It's welcome news. At Port Sudan, one of the major exit points, hundreds gathered yesterday hoping to reach Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. Flights are leaving the port too, this one bound for Turkey. Governments around the world scrambling to evacuate their citizens. Currently, as planes begin sending bombs down onto the capital city of Khartoum and battle with artillery and anti-air emplacements, the United Nations has since warned of Sudan's imminent collapse. Several civilians, including foreigners, have been caught in the crossfire, prompting pretty much the entire world to announce operations to evacuate their citizens from the country. But not without risk, since as of this day, a Turkish rescue plane was fired at and damaged, likely by the RSF, as was attempting to land. The no casualties were reported. Worries over Sudan's coming collapse were corroborated by Su Sudanese Prime Minister Abdallah Hamlok, who described the situation as a total nightmare and possibly worse than other conflicts like in Syria and Libya. The conflict so far has left over 500 people dead and triggered a mass refugee crisis and left several Sudanese without power, internet, and dwindling food supplies. The longer this crisis lasts, the more it threatens to tear Sudan apart. Speaking of the country of Syria, it has been in the midst of a civil war itself since 2014, after unrest against President Bashar al-Assad boiled over into full-on conflict as insurgent forces under the banner of the Syrian interim government engaged in open rebellion against the government of the Syrian Arab Republic and began taking large swaths of territory. Syria has been a state of military and humanitarian chaos ever since, as the interim government, supported by countries like Russia and Iran, fight the remaining forces of the Syrian Arab Republic supported by countries like Turkey. Elsewhere in the country, terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS have also participated, and the autonomous administration of northern East Syria has received support from much of the Western world. Neighboring Israel has seen Iranian presence in the country as a major threat, and has conducted several strikes and attacks in Syrian territory against Iranian infrastructure, drawing the ire of both Syria and Iran. Another such attack has occurred as of this day near the Syrian city of Homs, when airstrikes with the Israeli Air Force targeted several fuel stations and depots in the area. While the Syrian military did attempt to scramble air defenses to respond to the attack, such did not stop the airstrike from injuring at least three civilians and damaging several pieces of infrastructure in the area. The motivation for this attack likely stems from a recent visit from an Iranian foreign minister to Israel's border with Lebanon, as chaos in that region has raged on after the Al-Aqsa Mosque incident. Meanwhile, in the Russian-occupied Ukrainian territory of Crimea, Russia may find its once secure position there is starting to be challenged. Crimea had been securely under Russian rule since 2014 after its annexation and was used as a launching point for the southern front of the 2022 invasion. Though as progress stalled over time, 
Ukrainian forces appear to be forcing Russian forces back into defensive positions and seeking to take back the occupied territory. Crimea has been the recent subject of such since just days earlier, a suspected Ukrainian drone attack has just been repelled by Russian air defenses. As of this day, it appears a fire has engulfed a fuel depot in the city of Sevastopol, according to Governor Mikhail Rajvojayev. He claims that Ukrainian drones were responsible. No injuries reported, and Ukraine itself has yet to claim responsibility for the attack.